Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the January Smart Art Box. It's February now, so I am a little uh, behind, but um, I didn't wanna skip over it because it looks like it's gonna be a pretty fun box. So uh, in case you don't know, Smart Art Box is a subscription box company and they send out a box of art supplies with a project paper every month to their subscribers and each month um, del delves into a different material and a different art movement or artist. And this month we have Degas, who is a uh, who was a pastel artist in the Impressionist movement, and um, we got your brochure that talks about the different uh, products in the box, some tips, and also a project on the back that you can complete with the with the the stuff that's in the box. So here we have a um, art set from Royal and Lang Nickel. This is a pastel pencil art set. So it looks like it has pastels and pencils. We'll open all this um, up when we start our project. Uh, there is a set of six metallic Derwent watercolor pencils and I have to confess I actually have a larger set of these pencils, the 12 set. I got them many years ago and I actually never really liked them that much so I'm hoping that um, maybe these have been reformulated and they might be better but um, I did select a subject to draw that I think will work with these even if they aren't really um really vivid as i recall them to be they didn't get a lot of use because i had a hard time with them there is a pencil sharpener and eraser combo by derwent well that's kind of neat um huh i wonder if those are refillable that's kind of an interesting thing so you get your eraser and pencil sharpener all in one and it closes i get up i guess to keep it from spilling maybe oh no i hope i didn't just lock it shut oh there we go huh that's interesting Looks like a standard size pencil. And then we have a, looks like a black sketchbook. I'm gonna have to get my, my scissors out to open some of these things. So let's get everything unwrapped and ready to go. Now I'm gonna link in the video description a reference photo that I'm gonna be working on. And um, I think what I'll end up doing is probably time-lapsing this so um, it won't, oh, that's a nice smooth thick, oh, look at that, nice thick smooth paper. So that'll mean that I'll probably can work fairly quickly without filling the tooth. Um, and yeah, we'll go through it. I think the only, I, 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 uh, I'm thinking about time-lapsing this just because I am not that familiar with this brand of pastel and pastel pencil. So if I do encounter problems as I'm going along, I'll be able to tell you how to avoid them while you're doing your project. Let's take a look here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? So we got uh, six half sticks of uh, pastel chalks and we've got, um, it looks like a regular drawing pencil and five pastel pencils. So we will see how that goes. All right, let's get to work. Now the painting took me about a half an hour and the biggest challenge is going to be the limited color palette. And I kind of knew that going in having only, um, uh, six sticks of chalk. So I'm going in with a metallic uh, watercolor pencils because I figured if I make a mistake I can just brush it out with water and also I knew I could get a nice crisp design and these actually um, drew very cleanly. Um, I think these are the exact same pencils that I had from like I don't know maybe five years ago. I bought the tin of 12. I think that's the largest set they had. Um, they're not terribly metallic. Uh, they definitely were smooth to color, to sketch with though, so they weren't unpleasant at all and I didn't have any issues working with them. I think that if I had got this set and expected a really shiny metallic pencil, I would have been very disappointed. In fact, I, w I know I was because I was when I first purchased a set of 12 of those. But for this purpose, for just lying down um, those, uh, those kind of water splashes and the, the strawberry seeds and getting these these uh, just fine lines down, they worked really well. Now something to keep in mind though with these, even though they're watercolor pencils, they are a little waxy and you're gonna have issues with the pastel or pastel pencil sticking on top of them. So you can kind of use it as a resist or as a way to like put marks down that you want to keep unless you plan on going over with them with water. So that would be another thing if you end up adding a lot of the metallic watercolor pencil and you find that you can't stick anything on top because this is a, a very smooth paper. It's kind of an odd choice for pastels um, but not an odd choice for pencils so uh, so there's that um, so you may end up filling the tooth and need to go in and add water to kind of flatten everything down 
give you kind of that tooth back again and then you can layer up. Uh, the pastels were, were nice quality actually and I do have a bigger set of Royal and Magnical Chalk Pastels and they're not bad and they're very affordable. I think it's kind of a bummer there's only five colors though because I think that could frustrate uh, beginners especially and I think these smart art boxes are definitely more geared towards beginners if we were doing watercolor having five high quality watercolors would be excellent because you can mix before you bring it to your paper but on dry media like pastels and pastel pencils you're you really do your mixing on the paper because um, you can't like blend the pastel on a palette and then bring it over I mean if you want to add water to it I suppose you could but if you add a lot of water to pastels it's not going to show up on black I will show you that technique a bit here I just used a, actually a brush that came in a previous smart art kit and I was just basically damping down that uh, pastel because I couldn't stick the pastel over the pencil so I was just kind of mixing it all up so I could reclaim some tooth um, and I decided to do that with a strawberry as well because I couldn't get my values dark enough so I thought well let me just trap all of this um, this chalk down so then I can go over it and then any of the watercolor pencil that I had there would also become part of the paper and I would be able to layer on top so there's just a little trick there if you lose your tooth working with this kit because it is definitely a limited supply challenge I have to say though I do enjoy the challenge of kind of being handed supplies and okay go ahead and make something with this uh, but that, if that's not something that you enjoy then um, this might not be the thing for you or you might want to go ahead and add other supplies to it to make it a little bit more robust. Uh, the Smart Art box. If you're curious about subscribing to Smart Art and you're not sure if you should or not, I've done um, videos pretty much every month for the past couple of years using their boxes. So you can, you know, take a look back over the last few boxes and see if it's something that would be useful for you. I think it's mostly um, useful for homeschool art programs um, because it does have a little bit of an art history lesson, an artist lesson, a technique lesson, and it's everything you need is in that box. So it does take a little of the um, trial and error and um, kind of stress out of doing a homeschool art program. So I think that would be the best use of these boxes, but you know, or if you live someplace where it's hard to obtain materials or you just want somebody else to pick your products for you, that's fine too. Now for the water, since I was limited to what I could use for colors, I did a combination of the white pastel, the metallic blue pencil, the uh, blue pastel a chunk, and there's also a blue pastel pencil in there too that I've grabbed from time to time. Um, I chose this reference photo because it was primarily black, like probably, um, 70% of the picture is actually just black background and I knew that was going to be an advantage working since I was working on black pastel paper that's what came in it um, and actually this paper is really smooth I don't know if I would consider it really pastel paper I it's nice and thick which I like I think this would be more of a mixed media paper and I think it would work really well with gouache and if you had an underpainting in gouache and then use these pastel products on top of that I think it would work really well so if you've got this kit and you also have some gouache I would highly recommend working with them together because the gouache just has this, this matte texture to it and it would be really easy to build on top of. I did struggle a little bit, um, especially getting my values dark enough because of the limited colors I had for pastel. I had to mix black in with a lot of things and that's not something I like to do very much because I feel like it deadens the color quite a bit. So I had to do some finger blending here because um, I needed to mix some colors and soften some colors um, and I didn't have enough colors just to kind of mix by, by layering on new colors. Um, so that was handy to do. I just used my fingers or I used a wet brush if I really needed to, to tone down a color. I looked in the kind of the splashes on the reference photo for any undertones of color I could find and I added those in. They seem to mostly be uh, blue or gray or black, but you would get a little bit of like being able to see through the sheets of water and see some of the strawberry in the uh, strawberry hull. So I wanted to kind of pick out as much of that as I could. And then for some of the little bubbles, I ended up, I sketched little circles with a metallic pencil and then I added little highlights with a white. I did draw some kind of like half bubbles with the white stick but I didn't want to do too much of that because the sticks are kind of chunky and you can see that I broke the, st the white stick in half and I did that so I could get um, the like sh uh, sharper edge to sketch with so that's a nice tip if you have um, stick pastels and you need a sharp edge just break the stick I, I actually think broken pastels work better than full stick pastels uh, because even though it might bother you if you like to see your supplies all pretty and pristine they're more useful especially if you do any techniques where you're using the edge like I did in the water there to give me those 
kind of broken up wider passages of color. Um, I had to add some black into the hull because I didn't have a dark enough green just to get my values right because when you're working with limited supplies and you don't have the right colors, get the values right and that will make all the difference. And here you can see the finished picture. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out and if I wanted to darken any of the colors for further, I could spray them with fixative or hairspray and then go over with my highlights. But um, that's the fixative wasn't in the box so I didn't really want to do that. Uh, but I'm, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. All the info on Smart Art Box and the products that were included in this box are in the video description and you can check that out below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.